This is like some... Because you guys know JCS doesn't make videos anymore. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know why they didn't make videos every week. I mean, they were the most popular. Whatever. One of you guys DM me this, and I was like, okay, I'll watch on stream. So let's see. On January 7th, 2018. in Why is that to be an annoying voice, bro? On January 7th, 2018, in Belgrade, Montana, a man called 911 around 9.30 a.m. and said that his neighbor, Audria, had come over to report that her roommates had been shot. In the 911 call you're about to hear, Audria is heard in the background pleading for help to arrive immediately. 911, what's the address of your emergency? Uh, I live in the next door neighbor. She just came over and said that somebody shot her really. Okay. Did it just happen? Yeah, she said it just happened to you. Can I get my place? Okay. The roommate Ashley is the one that's still alive. She is still alive? She said she is, yeah. Okay, tell her to take a deep breath, okay? I'm gonna ask you some questions. Is Ashley bleeding seriously? Was she bleeding seriously? Yeah, she said yeah. Okay. Alright, do we know if Ashley's completely alert? Um, no, I don't believe so. I mean, she just saw it. She ran. Okay. When the police arrived at Lauren DeWise's home, everything seemed normal in the beginning, until police went over to the back of the house, where they noticed bloody footwear impressions in the snow that was leading to the back door of the house. The door had clearly been kicked in. The police continued to move in up the stairs, where they found the body of a 35-year-old Lauren DeWise, who was laying dead in her bed from gunshot wounds to the head. Her roommate, Ashley Van Hermit, was also shot and was critically wounded on the floor in a pool of blood. Ashley suffered four gunshot wounds, including a bullet to the back of the head. But incredibly, she was still alive. It was a race against the clock as paramedics did all they could to keep Ashley alive. When she was stabilized at the scene, Ashley was taken to hospital in order for her to be treated for her wounds. Miraculously, Ashley survived and recovered from her injuries However, due to the bullet hitting her brain, Ashley's vision was impaired, and she also couldn't remember anything prior to the incident. The investigators quickly needed to establish people of interest that they can interview. Detectives turned their attention towards Ashley's recently divorced ex-husband, Paul DeWise. He was not a suspect at this point, however, police needed to speak to him in order to gather more information on the case. Paul DeWise was quickly tracked down just half a mile from Lauren's residence and was brought into the police station for a formal interview. Okay. Go ahead and get out. Los, there's a vid called what a 15 year old mass killer looks like i think you'd enjoy it i don't like that's uh okay that's like a weird thing to say that i would enjoy like i don't enjoy i don't like enjoy these i think there's like the crime is interesting but like saying oh yeah dude i think you'd enjoy a mass killer like no yeah they're de i my favorite shit is the interview is the uh interrogation that's my favorite shit this is murder porn it's fucking weird what the fuck Murder porn? No, you're actually weird for saying that, bro. No, you're weird as fuck for saying that, bro. That's weird as fuck, bro. Hands up. Walk over here. Turn around. Look away from me. Walk backwards. What do you mean, do this IRL? Like, what does that mean, bro? I'm starting to get concerned, some people in this chat, dude. I'm, I'm starting to get worried, bro. Like, legitimately, like, legit worried. Keep coming. Keep coming. Stop. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Is this the guy who called 911 or a different guy, Chad? Quickly, quickly, quickly. I'm lost. I'm lost. Different. All right. Do not move. Do you understand me? Take him to the back okay. of my car. All right. Um, so, the reason that I wanted to talk to you is there were some issues that happened, uh, over at Lauren 
Adam's house last this morning, and I just kind of wanted to touch base with you to see um, if you were over there at all, and if um, kind of where you were um, this morning. That kind of thing. Well, uh, someone broke into the back door of her, her place, and so we're we're trying to get all of the stuff together. Um, from what I understand, you guys were separated and working on the sure. and that's, that's kind of where we're at. Sure. Well, uh, not, not really. Well, the, the person that came in ended up Shoot. So she's dead. Yeah. So. Oh my god. So that that's why we're talking to you because you guys are going through a divorce. And from what I understand, that's we need to kind of figure out what's going on. And so. Absolutely anything that you can tell us that might give us a little clarity. Really bad act, right? This is bad acting. This is bad acting. Oh my god. What? Bro, even if that's your ex-wife who you like don't like, you would still have like a more genuine reaction than oh oh my god. Like that's not even real, bro. That's you would never react like that to anything. to me. I don't know anything about it. Three years, complete surprise. They told me when they picked me up they're investigating a homicide. I did not think I, I would know. I just... There's some the weird stuff that's been happening since I've been broken. So, I... You know, I'm like, geez. Well, let me... Let me just say right off the bat regardless of your relational issues. I understand. I love her. Lauren's very important to me. And I'm so sorry that you're going through this right now. Bro, he's rocking. He's touching his legs because he's comforting himself. We saw this in other JCSs. He's trying to, like, comfort himself. It's telltale sign. At this point, the detective has no idea whether Paul is innocent or not. Therefore, he will carry on asking probing questions, while at the same time showing empathy to a potentially grieving innocent person. Can you tell me a little bit about how the, the separation has been going? It's, it depends on who you ask. For her, it's fine. For me, it's really tough. What? I want to know from you. Um, I... Trouble dealing with it, you know? Can you, uh, let's just start with a basic timeline. So what about the last, last evening, last night? As detailed as you can, say from the end of dinner time. Tell me about what you did. Um, I fell asleep again. I'm not sure when I slept. Guys, what is going on in this, in this chat right now, bro? Why are you spamming KSI raid? Like, how, where is your attention? Where is your attention deficit pills? Take them. Holy sh- I've never seen ADHD, like, destroy, like, this many people, bro. Dude, KSI does not stream on Twitch. What time do you think you went to bed? Paul has admitted that he did leave his house that night, but only to go to the convenience store with his son. Detectives will already be questioning if this information is only being put forward in order to act as an alibi Paul can use. Creating a timeline of Lauren's death and allowing Paul to be locked into one story straight away is important, 
as this information will later be examined and could determine if Paul had the opportunity to carry out this horrendous attack. At this point in the case, there was no probable cause to detain Paul DeWise, and for that reason, he was released. However, police did manage to seize his phone. Shortly after, the detectives decided to bring Paul's son, Joe DeWise, in for a formal interview. It was important to get his side of the story, as he was the only person who was with Paul at the time that the murder occurred. Just so you understand who I am, uh, my name is Jeremy Cobb. I'm the detective sergeant for the sheriff's office. Okay. Obviously, you, you know what happened to Dan. Um, given that, then I need to be able to sit down and be able to talk to you, right? How was your relationship with her? We're, we were close. Yeah. She was like my mom. But okay. She wasn't my mom. She was, she was pretty much like my mom. Okay. Now let's go to Saturday. Um, and just walk me, walk me through Saturday. Okay. Here for Sunday. So Saturday. Let's see. So I got up around like maybe twelve ish, or twelve. Why'd you go? I just go with him, just because. Yeah. Excuse me. I mean, do you gang with your dad quite a bit? Yeah. Get no, you just pretty so. tight. Yeah. So we just Fair enough to say. Just whatever we do, you know. Is it just you and dad then yeah. on the beer run? Yeah. Okay. So you don't recall hearing the doors or anything? So, it's important that, that you and I, as we kind of work through the details, that, that we're completely truthful with each other. Okay. That's, that's... Hold on, I gotta shout out my aunt, uh, who, who watches the 90 day streams. Um, she said, I saw you streaming tonight, glad you're better out. I was in the hospital today. I have friggin' COVID. I'm on four different meds. I'm so sick, I never had it. Why is she awake? Like, bro, if you're an older person, you shouldn't be awake this late with COVID. Let's keep going, dude. I, I'm, I'm done with this chat. It's pretty important. What do you think happened? Jeez. Yeah. Um, as I know. As I know, it could be drugs. Who do you think? Who do you think you'd do something like that? No guesses. No guesses. Oh, maybe. But... No. Couldn't be the detectives. He's on the street. Given his age, the detectives didn't feel like they needed to push him more and therefore concluded the interview. Joe has provided his statement about the events of that night, which coincided with his father's story. This story was either the truth or a fabricated lie that Paul and his son rehearsed prior to this interview. A few days had passed when the crime lab came across an interesting discovery. There was a second set of shoe prints found at the scene that was not previously known to the, the detectives. And this particular shoe print seemed to be significantly smaller than the other set of footprints that was already found. Knowing that Paul DeWise and his son, Joe DeWise, set off from the house on their own at the same time that the murder was believed to have occurred. Detectives now knew it was time to bring Joe DeWise back into the police station for a second interview. You and I, you and I kind of talked about the timeline um, and what everybody had done on Saturday, and um, and we talked about that kind of in detail um, going into Sunday morning on the seventh, right? Okay. So, what I guess let's start with this. 
The detectives asked him to describe exactly what he did on the day of the murder, and Joe's answer stayed the same. He told them that he was at home with his dad that entire day, apart from a brief period where he and his dad went to the convenience store to buy beer. The detectives know that he isn't telling the complete truth. That's, that's pr pretty accurate to what you told me yesterday, which is unfortunate because that's actually what happened. And I was hoping that today we could, you and I, break through that and talk about what actually happened That's because if I, if I if I can't get you to be honest with me I can't help you and I don't believe that you're being completely truthful with me and I don't know exactly why but I'm not willing to give up on you I think I think that we can get through it okay I know. Guys, get a lawyer, bro. Obviously, don't be a murderer. That's just the basic. But no matter what, if you're in a police station, you need a lawyer. Don't talk to the cops ever, bro. Not even for five seconds. Never talk to the cops. You're saying, Los, you're not Saul Goodman. Okay, but that's an actually good advice. Don't talk to them. They can't help you. They don't want to help you. They just want a confession that's good for their job. And we've seen this. If cops will get fake confessions. That this is really hard for you to sit here. I know it. Bro, he's hella close to him, dude. The fuck? This, this detective, bro, he, he did it, bro. He did it. He did it. He did it. He did it. I The son folded, yeah. But I don't know why the dad even involved the son in the lie. It's just stupid. Was it you or him? Wait a second, though. The son's lying, though. Because didn't they... Weren't there two footprints at the scene? So he's... He thinks he's snitching... Oh my God, he's snitching on his dad. But like, his dear dad. Dude, but think about it. This is the stupidest lie ever. 
This is the dumbest lie. What's in your hands, Los? This is my weapon. If someone, if you know, I have weapons all around my house, but this is just the one one that I have down here. So uh, you can use it in different ways, but it's like if you come in, like, bro, it's over for you, bro. Like it's over for you. That's a Samsung TV stand. Okay, yeah, like technically it is. All right. Technically, yeah, it is that. Um, uh, I didn't live in a gated community my whole life. In any way. Never lived in a gay community in my fucking life, bro. After this interview with Joe DeWise, detectives now have their primary suspect, which was the same man they suspected from the beginning, Paul DeWise. Looking into their relationship, it was clear to see that hate and anger Paul had towards Lauren. And although they were divorced, Paul still couldn't believe that Lauren moved on and started dating other men. He would become increasingly jealous and would stalk Lauren throughout the day. A Facebook comment written by Paul DeWise read, Last night I caught Lauren Walder DeWise making out with this man in her car outside of a bar. This man attacked me repeatedly and was pretty beat up. This evening, I caught her with a different man in his truck in a different parking lot when she said she was in leadership. Bozeman sponsored Rocky Mountain Bank. I asked her to move out. She came home, got her belongings and left and turned off her location sharing. She didn't shed a tear. Now I am a single stay-at-home dad with three amazing kids that needs to find a full-time job and daycare. I am also very angry and sad. Lauren was everything to me and the kids, even though she stopped paying attention to them or spending time with any of us. When police searched his phone, they found spine-chilling audio recordings of Paul and Lauren. After listening to it, it was clear to see that Paul has been planning this murder for quite some time. You've always told me that you are I'm trying to express myself. You're such a liar. Are you serious? That's all I'm doing. I'm so tired of you. I'm going to go to this little silly face. I'm telling you. I don't want you to die. I don't think you can. I've done everything for you. I've given up everything. I'm 
Detectives also managed to locate the gun used to kill Lauren DeWise. A 22 caliber Ruger pistol was found near Paul's home, with a serial number that linked Paul DeWise to purchasing it. Given the statements that detectives received from Paul's son and with all the evidence collected from the scene and Paul's phone, the detectives now had probable cause to request an arrest warrant issue for Paul DeWise. He was arrested that same day and was sent to prison to await his trial. The conclusion of the seven-day trial and two hours of deliberation, the jury found Paul DeWise guilty on all three counts, including deliberate homicide, attempted deliberate homicide, the shooting of Ashley Van Hermet, and using a gun to commit the crimes. District Court Judge Holly Brown sentenced Paul DeWise to 220 years in Montana State Prison with no eligibility for parole. I actually don't mind this guy's voice, to be honest. I actually don't mind it. In the beginning, I thought I'd be annoyed, but you know what? It's fine, dude. JCS, you want to just not make videos? That's cool, bro. That's that's fucking cool, bro. What'd you guys think? WL, what'd you think of that video?